Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Ignition Time. Let's take a look at what's going on behind the scenes in Washington DC. This channel, the Ignition Time channel is about the country, the economy as well as our money. Let's start with some normal stuff before we get into the really bizarre stuff that's emerging in Washington DC. Let's start with Congressman Ro Khanna and this is what the Democrats said. So what we want to do is make sure that we don't have a moderate Republican agenda. for the president that we actually get the president's agenda through and the only way to do that is to make sure that the reconciliation and the bipartisan bill move together i have reported this elsewhere on our channel folks i believe that we will see a bipartisan bill in fact we are looking at it over 2700 pages long and a reconciliation bill that includes a majority of the democrats priorities in fact rokhanna specifically said that let's roll the tape and hear from the congressman from california the democrat let's roll the tape and watch Well, the votes aren't there uh, to do that. There uh, simply aren't enough votes because the idea with the progressives are why not get through the president's uh, agenda? I mean, the president ran on a, a strong infrastructure proposal. The president ran on childcare, on uh, free community college, and what we can't do is say, okay, we're going to just do uh, what Rob Portman, who I respect tremendously, wants, and that's going to be the end of Joe Biden's. Uh, a first year in uh in, in his presidency that's not what he was elected for that's not what the house and senate were elected for so what we want to make sure is that we don't have a moderate republican agenda for the president that we actually get the president's agenda through and the only way to do that is to and make sure that the reconciliation and bipartisan bill move together and it's very clear that we need another major stimulus for the economy in fact delta is spreading all over the country this is reporting from john avlon from cnn john avlon is a senior political analyst and anchor at cnn and he says florida has got nearly 25 times the number of people hospitalized for the pandemic than in all of canada let's roll the tape and hear from john avlon from CNN let's watch or let's look at Florida where just a few weeks ago governor Ron DeSantis's pack was selling swag that said don't fouchy my Florida well now Florida has broken its record for new daily cases and hospitalizations higher than before vaccines were available and patients in the ICU there are begging for vaccines in fact Florida's got nearly 25 times the number of people hospitalized for covid than in all of Canada. In the meantime, Republicans are continuing to hammer the Democrats every opportunity they get. Here's a quote from the Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. He said that Senator Bernie Sanders may not have won the Democratic presidential nomination, but his ideology sure has won the war. In a series of scathing comments from the Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, let's take a look at what he says about Bernie Sanders and about the liberal agenda of the Democrats. Let's roll the tape and hear the Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell in action. Let's watch. Our friend and colleague, the junior senator from Vermont, may not have won the Democratic presidential nomination, but his ideology sure has won the war. So in the next few days, the Democratic leader says they'll start the process of ramming through this awful, awful package. They want to respond to a border crisis with amnesty. they want to respond to runaway inflation and soaring costs for families with even more reckless spending printing and borrowing and if you thought that was interesting check out center ted cruz uh, sporting some ray-ban sunglasses saying i quote giving up our freedom to over controlling government bureaucrats who want to shut down our schools shut down our businesses shut down our churches and shut down our lives the democrats have done enough of that this year no damn more let's roll the tape and hear from center ted cruz always always looking for trouble let's watch i've been vaccinated my family's been vaccinated but that's a personal choice that's a personal choice that you can make for your life and your family we believe in freedom we believe in individual responsibility you can make this choice you know on capitol hill democrats right now are engaged in a kabuki theater just about everyone's been vaccinated and yet they're putting on their masks to show just how submissive and compliant they are to this new government edict. It doesn't make any sense. We can take common sense steps to defeat COVID-19. That's a good thing. But giving up our freedom to over-controlling government bureaucrats who want to shut down our schools, shut down our businesses, shut down our churches and shut down our lives. The Democrats have done enough of that this year. No damn And speaking of looking for trouble, 
Here's Senator Tommy Tuberville, the Republican. He said, I quote, I've heard Democrats say they want to replace cops with social workers. I'm not sure where he heard that, but let's let's just go with it for now because apparently these uh, some of these Republicans hear different things and then try and extrapolate it and try and create further division. I've heard Democrats say they want to replace cops with social workers. If someone is attempting to break into my house, I'm not calling a social worker to come perform an evaluation to develop a treatment for the assailant. Wow. Let's roll the tape and hear from Tommy Tabowal. For last year, we've heard some Democrats at every level talk about wanting to defund the police, take money away from them. We've got too many of them. In many cities, they control Democrats succeeding in reducing policy budgets. They've been very successful. They've told police to stop doing their jobs, stop enforcing certain laws. You know, I've heard Democrats say that they want to replace cops with social workers. You know, while I understand the well-intentioned desire to address the root cause of crime, instead of just focusing on the the fallout, leaving our police underfunded and ill-equipped is not the solution. If someone is attempting to break into my house, I'm not calling a social worker to come perform an evaluation to develop a treatment for the assailant. I'm not doing that. Now, if you thought that was interesting, there's another troublemaker, Fox News' is Peter Ducey. He's asking the White House press secretary, Jen Psaki, if former President Barack Obama is, I quote, setting the wrong example in hosting his 60th birthday with a big party on Martha's Vineyard. Saki says that he should speak with Obama's press team and notes that the event is outdoors with testing requirements. Hey, Ducey, where were you when uh, when former President Trump essentially had these super spreader events? Did you ask the same question of former President Trump? Where were you when the president himself, former President Trump, got the pandemic and had to had to essentially go to Walter Reed Medical Center for treatment? Well, instead, we have Fox News' Peter Ducey looking for new signs of trouble. Let's roll the tape and hear from Peter Ducey. Let's watch. Is President Obama setting the wrong example about how serious COVID-19 is by hosting a big birthday party with hundreds of people this week? Well, I would certainly refer you to uh, the team who is working for my former boss to give you more specifics of what the protocols are in place. But I would note first that former President Obama has been a huge advocate of individuals getting vaccinated. In the meantime, a stunning comment from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who was speaking with CNN's Jake Tapper. He asked her who's to blame for the failure to extend the eviction moratorium. And the congresswoman gave a very direct answer about conservative House Democrats threatening to get on planes and the Biden White House waiting until the day before. She said this, I quote, we have to really just call a spade a spade. We cannot in good faith blame the Republican Party when the House Democrats have the majority. She also cast blame on the White House for not being forthright about their view on renewing the federal eviction ban until one day before the House adjourned. Let's roll the tape and hear from Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Well, you know, I think there's a couple of, of issues here. First of all, you are absolutely correct in that the House and House leadership had the opportunity to vote to extend the moratorium. And there were many, and there was frankly a handful of conservative Democrats in the House that threatened to get on planes rather than hold this vote. And we have to um, really just call a spade a spade. We cannot in good faith, blame the Republican Party when House Democrats have a majority. Now, there is something to be said for the fact that this court order came down on the White House a month ago, and the White House waited until the day before the House adjourned to release a statement asking on Congress to extend the moratorium. This came after weeks. I sit on the Financial Services Committee, which has jurisdiction over housing. We had, you know, the the housing secretary there asking about the administration's stance Uh, We asked the Biden administration about their stance, and they were not being really forthright about that advocacy and that request until the day before the House adjourned. And so the House was put into a, I believe, a a needlessly difficult situation. Um, And it's not just me saying that. Uh, Financial Services Chairwoman, uh, Chairwoman Maxine Waters has made that very clear as well. And so there's a couple of contributing factors here. We have governors who are also not getting this emergency rental assistance out in time, which is 
forcing this this extension, what we would like an extension of the moratorium. The fact of the matter is, is that the problem is here. The House should reconvene and call this vote and extend the moratorium. And in the meantime, Governor Henry McMaster, the Republican from South Carolina, says, I quote, there is exaggeration and hyperbole on the part of epidemiologists and media on big pandemic spikes in South Carolina and elsewhere. He said this, I quote, we have to put the fire out. It's smoldering in places and could come back up. But the house is not on fire again. Wow. Let's watch. Yeah, I think that the, the, the tone and the, I think there's some exaggeration going on, some hyperbole of those figures that you just mentioned. Yes, the Rates are going up, but they're way below what they were a year ago from that, or a year ago. Now, the, the rates are going up, but they're not nearly as high as they were last uh, last July. Uh, the hospital capacity is uh, have plenty. Uh, the, those rates are, are not uh, going up. They're, there's no danger there. But uh, we're urging people to get vaccinated. But I, I really think we've got to stay calm. We have put the fire out. It's smoldering in places and could come back up. But the house is not on fire again. And that's what a lot of the epidemiologists and experts are telling the people. And it is uh, it's frightening people. And if you thought that was intense, Kevin McCarthy joked, the House Minority Leader joked that it will be hard not to hit Nancy Pelosi with a gavel once he becomes House Speaker. Can you even believe he said that? He said it'll be hard not to hit House Speaker Pelosi with a gavel. And a spokesman for Kevin McCarthy said he was, I quote, obviously joking when he said it would be hard not to hit Speaker Pelosi with a gavel if he becomes Speaker. Now, I want you to listen to this audio of the House Minority Leader, Kevin McCarthy. And he said this, I quote, I want you to watch Nancy Pelosi hand me that gavel. It'll be hard not to hit her with it. Let's roll the tape and hear this audio of the House Minority Leader speaking about House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Let's watch. We're fully vaccinated. We went to Jordan. 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 You're all in bed. She wanted to say that the House is... I want you to watch Nancy Pelosi hand me that gavel. The speaker is referring to the CDC. It'll be hard not to hear with it, but I will back it down. I just left. Thank you. Speaking with Dr. So that's it, everyone. Please click the like button. Please click subscribe. Please enable notifications. Let me know what you think of these bizarre comments from the House Minority Leader. What you think of some stunning comments from other Republicans, specifically troublemakers like Senator Ted Cruz. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Please click the like button. Please click subscribe. Please enable notifications. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode of Ignition Time. Take care. Bye.